Some staff members at a long-term care facility were anticipating a transfer of a client who has multiple sclerosis. GF has been living at home, but her family is no longer able to care for her. She is 35 years old, married, and the mother of two teenagers. This review will cover her disorder and her care. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is a chronic disease in which there is degeneration of the protective myelin sheath on exons, resulting in impaired conduction of impulses. MS progresses in one of several patterns. First, and most common, relapsing remitting, with increasingly frequent attacks and an eventual return to baseline. Second, relapsing progressive. Symptoms progress, but the client does not return to baseline. Third, primary and secondary progressive. This is a gradual deterioration without remissions. Acute relapses are less common with secondary. And finally, stable or benign, with no change for more than one year. The first symptoms usually appear between the ages of 20 and 40. The life expectancy of clients who have MS is approximately 85%, that of those who do not have it. The risk factors for MS are vague because we don't know exactly what causes MS. Various theorists believe MS is caused by a virus, an autoimmune response, or genetic predisposition. We do know that it is more common in colder climates, and there is no known way to prevent MS. Although the signs and symptoms of MS are highly varied, some common findings are weakness, muscle spasms, altered sensation in affected extremities, clumsiness, and tremors when performing an activity. Clients may experience tinnitus, vertigo, hearing loss or facial weakness, and dysphagia. Some clients develop speech problems, blurred or double vision, decreased visual acuity or visual fields, or involuntary eye movements called nystagmus. Others experience bowel, bladder, and sexual dysfunction, neuropathic pain, and impaired cognition. Usually in the late stages, the diagnostic tools for MS include an MRI, which provides the most specific diagnostic evidence, although CSF analysis, CT scan, and electromyography may provide supportive data. Drug therapy is the primary medical treatment. Agents employed at various stages and for various symptoms include biologic response modifying agents such as interferon 1b or beta-seron, antispasmodics such as baclofen or lyorosol, anticonvulsants such as carbamazepine, trade name Tegretol, or gabapentin, trade name Neurontin, for neuropathic pain the corticosteroid prednisone during periods of exacerbations, and amantadine, trade name Symmetril, to relieve fatigue. The staff at the long-term care facility wanted to focus on the important areas to monitor in their incoming client. What do you think those would be? First, the progression of symptoms, especially those that affect mobility, vision, nutrition, fluid intake, and elimination they should determine GF's current ability to perform ADLs and to fulfill her usual roles. And they should keep in mind that, especially during the transition from home, the client may feel lonely, abandoned, or depressed. Can you anticipate some nursing diagnoses that apply to this client? Nursing diagnoses include impaired physical mobility, activity intolerance, disturbed sensory perception, and self-care deficits. How about the risk for aspiration, ineffective role performance, functional urinary incontinence, and of course ineffective individual or family coping? Based on these nursing diagnoses, what care would you provide? For impaired physical mobility, you'd promote independence within the client's abilities. As far as activity intolerance, remember to plan more demanding activities in the morning when clients are likely to tolerate activity better. You take measures to prevent complications of immobility. The client will have disturbed sensory perception, so you'd protect body areas that lack sensation from pressure, trauma, heat, or cold. What about self-care deficits and risk for aspiration? 
You'd be sure to sit her upright for meals, with her neck slightly flexed. You'd thicken thin liquids for easier swallowing and encourage at least 2,000 milliliters of fluid daily for functional urinary incontinence. You'd monitor for bladder distension and catheterize as ordered. If you use an indwelling catheter, you'd use aseptic technique for insertion. Maintain a closed system and assess for urinary tract infection. You'd monitor her stools, give stool softeners as prescribed, and assist with her toileting at usual times for defecation. One of the toughest challenges would be addressing ineffective individual or family coping. You'd be sensitive if she expresses distress over her increasing disability. Spending time with her, asking her preferences, and trying to help her adapt to the usual routine. You'd include family members in teaching and counseling and refer her for spiritual or mental health counseling as appropriate.